Hi everyone, I'm Giles Ox, one of the founders of Prospect Bio, uh, where we built something called a biosensor. So what is a biosensor? It's an engineered cell that has been designed to measure a specific chemical or compound by providing a quantifiable output uh, that is easy to read. Most frequently that's fluorescence. So I know this sounds kind of confusing. so what's valuable about a cell that lights up? Uh, well, to start, cells can measure almost any chemical. Basically anything that uh, is, exists in the natural world, a cell can likely measure. On top of that, once designed, Cells are nearly costless to grow up and to deploy. And building upon that, cells have an incredibly high ceiling for throughput as measurement technology. They're one of the most scalable measurement uh, platforms that you could think of. Um, and, and when you put that all together, I'd encourage you all to think about what in your industry would you measure if you could do it near infinitely, uh, very quickly, with very little cost. I bet you that everyone here could come up with a unique, valuable application of a biosensor. And that brings me to the elephant in the room, and that is that we are not an agriculture company. Uh, instead, agriculture is one of many industries where our biosensors will catalyze significant uh, improvement by enabling fast, low-cost, massive-scale testing. And so with such a broad application horizon, where do you start? Well, for a variety of reasons, our first industry is synthetic biology. Uh, for those unfamiliar, synthetic biologists are the people who are designing organisms uh, to make products that were traditionally made from petroleum. Uh, and that industry is represented by this uh, philosophy you see here. This philosophy has a problem, it's a throughput problem. Um, so the, the, the throughput for design and build is massive, and the throughput for test represents a real bottleneck. Um, and to make that more concrete, here is the cost curve for testing in this industry. The takeaway from this is that if you extend this cost curve out to the throughput of design or build, you're talking about million, uh, hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars a day spent on test. So to cut to the chase, this is the cost curve when you deploy biosensors in this industry. It's not simply cheaper than the alternative, it's fundamentally enabling technology, uh, alleviating the bottleneck and allowing high throughput testing. Uh, to date, we have five industry partners who represent some of the world's largest chemical companies as well as leading Symbio shops. Uh, we've closed contracts worth in excess of half a million dollars. Um, and these products have allowed us to work on targets like uh, developing bio-based synthetic rubbers, uh, decreasing the cost of biofuels, and developing consumer products like bio-based flavors and fragrances. Um, with the rest of my time, I'd just like to thank our team, um, who are just exceptional and constantly over-executing. I know a lot of parents say, I don't know how my kids turned out so well. My co-founder and I say, we don't know how we fell ass backwards into such an exceptional group of people. Um, so if any of this is interest to you, or you want to dive more into what a biosensor is, and what some of the other applications are, or how it can affect agriculture, Please come find me uh, in the next couple of days. Thank you. We got questions. Carrie, yeah. could your biosensors be used to better tell when fresh food is no longer safe to eat? Uh, yeah, so biosensors can absolutely be used to measure things like toxins and pathogens in food. Um, Begin with my. Oh, right, sorry. Uh, biosensors, uh, to a degree, yes. So, um, as I was saying, biosensors can absolutely be used to measure things like toxins, pathogens, and if there's certain metabolites that indicate a food is not good to eat, yes, it could measure it. Warren? I agree, your solution has enormous potential, um, but also if you could help uh, educate the panel on how your capital structure is going to meet the regulatory requirements in order to get this to market? Um, sure, so there isn't a lot of regulatory barrier uh, in this part of synthetic biology. Honestly, the space in general has been untouched. Um, so as far as capital, capital requirements, we take an approach that is very capitally light. Basically, um, uh, the simplest way to, to, to explain this is that we source our biosensors from nature. So we have this big library of environmental DNA, and we computationally mine it to generate our biosensors. So uh, to put this more concretely, building a biosensor costs less than five or ten thousand uh, dollars. We we deliver them for much more than that. Yeah, Mike. Great, great presentation. Um, what uh, what verticals do you see kind of taking off first in, in terms of order? And impact or magnitude, I mean, where do you see the business uh, serving? Yeah, so the, the immediate uh, vertical is synthetic biology, so helping those groups doing strain engineering to develop bio-based products. 
Um, I think the most immediate uh, industry after that would be agriculture, um, doing things like uh, field-based testing, uh, monitoring soil uh, composition, nitrate levels, these kind of things. Um, in descending order after that, what we see is food and beverage manufacturing. So again, me measuring toxins or pathogens or contaminants in a production environment. Uh, and then going beyond that, uh, it becomes a much broader spectrum. Probably next up would be medical diagnostic. So the idea of being able to fingerprint a disease by measuring hundreds of metabolites in parallel to uh, diagnose them. Great, just under a minute. Yeah, Oh, can you tell me, paint a picture for me of the like, environmental social impact, so that's one of our judging criteria, I guess, can you kind of paint a scenario or two in latest terms around where you see this really making an impact on the environmental scale? Yeah, so the immediate, the immediate impact is that uh, bio-based products have been slow to take off, partially because the economics often don't work, if you think about things like ethanol or development alternatives. Uh, the cost and time associated with with developing a viable bio-based product has often meant that it gets killed at some point in its development. Uh, we are tackling one of the single biggest cost drivers <coughs> and time to drivers to related to development. And so what we're doing is enabling more bio-based products. Um, farther down the road, you're talking about applications in like uh, wastewater testing or water testing. You could develop a biosensor for arsenic that's actually been done for like uh, other things like that. 